them, I once said to the mushroom, how can we save the world? Somebody had challenged me in a group like this. They said, why don't you ask it how we can save the world? Which I had never been being sort of an oblique thinker. It had never occurred to me to be so blunt with it. But the next time I found myself with it, I said, how can we save the world? And without a moment's hesitation, it said, each person should parent only once. Uh, this is an astonishing idea. This is not zero population growth. This is population falling by 50% every 20 years from here on out. Uh, if, if, uh, if, people in the high-tech industrial democracies would limit themselves to one child, uh, almost immediately the destruction of the Earth's ecosystems and resources would halt. We preach population control in the third world, but the statistics show that uh, to a woman in the first world who has a child, that child will consume between 800 and 1,000 times more resources in the course of its lifetime than a child born in Bangladesh or some other third world place. So if, if we were to practice this one person, one child policy uh, in the first world democracies, uh, there would almost immediately be a visible slackening of the pressure on resources. And population is the, is the thing which is driving everything over the edge uh, and is not allowing any time for full reflection about land use, implementation of technologies, the political directions we want to go in. Because everywhere, you know, you, know, you just hurl money at problems like uh, sanitation, detoxification of land, education of children, uh, cleaning up of water supplies, extension of early primary education, and so forth and so on. No matter how much money you throw at these problems, you see no progress because it's all dragged down by burgeoning populations. So, uh, and it's interesting, I've always felt that the way to solve social problems collective social problems is to find solutions which advance the agendas of individuals. In other words, some version of enlightened self-interest. And if you think about this one person, one child thing, what we're saying is uh, how would you like to have increased leisure time, increased disposable income, and the sincere gratitude of humanity uh, by uh, volunteering to limit your, your procreative activity. And I would favor social policies that would give people cradle to the grave medical care and cancel their income tax and whatever it took uh, to, to uh, honor people who did that because that is the most significant single political act any one of us uh, could probably do. Uh, it's very practical. It's a bumper sticker. It astonished me when the mushroom said this. I thought it was going to be a discord. It said, you know, one each person should parent only one child. In a single sentence, it offers probably the only solution to our long-term dilemma on this planet. Can we do it? Well, we don't know. It, it involves changing our habits, the hardest things we have uh, to change. It involves injecting novelty in an area where habits have ruled for millennia and tens of millennia, our reproductive uh, behaviors. On the other hand, as primates, we never really get rocking and rolling until we're painted into a corner. Uh, now, China is attempting to do something like this. Uh, but, of course, they start from a, a more problematic circumstance than our own. 
However, if China continues to limit its population, that's the one piece of the puzzle missing from its ability to project its culture onto a global scale. If the rest of us pollute our social systems and drag the development of our economies with burgeoning populations at the same time that the Chinese population is falling and they are bringing their technologies and infrastructure up to speed, then we could find ourselves in a very different socio-political circumstance not far downstream. Any comment on the on that whole idea. It's an interesting idea. I'm surprised that there is no society for it. I've never heard it discussed. Not radical lesbians, not libertarians, not... And I also thought when it first came up that there must be some hideous political flaw in it that some radical feminist or somebody would spring forward and point out this appalling contradiction as to why this couldn't be done or why this was utterly unacceptable and dehumanizing. Nobody has ever done that either. People have said, the only criticism I've had of it is people have said uh, that political power is based on population. But I argue that's not true. If that were true, India would be the second most powerful nation in the world. Well, what about France? What about Germany? What about England? So, uh, you know, we are not in a breeding race with the brown-skinned people of the planet. Thinking like that is crazy-making. Uh, what determines the viability of a society is the quality of life that it delivers to the greatest uh, number of people. So I think one person, one child, and those of you who haven't yet entered the reproductive phase of your life, you might consider. People have objected and said, well, but children need other children. Uh, th this is arguable. The nuclear family is not handed down from Mount Sinai. The nuclear family is a late 19th century invention at the convenience of industrial capitalism. If there is a human model handed down from Mount Sinai, it's the extended family group, the aunts, the uncles, the cousins, all together in a, in a long house or a compound. Well, we haven't lived like that uh, in America since uh, the 1840s. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was no way to live anyway. In 1800, the average American woman, the average American woman, gave birth 13 times in her life. Uh, this, this is no population, this is not a behavior pattern we want to emulate. I, I think that we are sentimental that the concept of the child is some kind of morbid download from 19th century romanticism and that it's a morbid concept. Uh, the, chi the child in our society is symbol of innocence and victim of mayhem. Uh, it would be, you know, in Amazonian societies that I've observed, the children are small versions of adults and as quickly as they can handle them, they are given responsibilities and roles and they participate in life, birth, death, sexuality, hunting rituals. There is no, this idea that we screen people from the facts of life because they are innocent and fragile. And it's a complete paradox in our society because while we're dishing out this rhetoric of innocence, we're creating a popular culture so steeped in images of violence and abuse and rape and so forth that the idea that there are any secrets from anybody is a pretty hollow rhetoric. So we need to re-envision our relationship to children. Uh, they are more precious than we have tended to treat them. They are more central to our future than we have tended uh, to admit. And our population policies, if they don't swing around to take cognizance of, of this, will probably derail all our best intents 
to build a, a sane and caring world. Anyway, that's the opinion of an extraterrestrial fungus on a matter of, uh, of human population. 